What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. Today I'm going to be doing a compositing breakdown of the result of our recently uploaded Blender 3D window explosion tutorial utilizing the Chaos add-on. As you probably know, I do most of my compositing instead of After Effects, so this will be an After Effects compositing walkthrough. However, feel free to apply any of these concepts of compositing your various debris fields inside of any compositor of your choice. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of After Effects and this is our final result here, so I'll go ahead and just play through it. And it's a pretty nice looking explosion here. All of our different layer outputs that we use to composite this explosion together, aside from a few sparks and a few dust elements, were from Blender and I showed how to make in that tutorial, so be sure to check that out. But uh, now I'm going to go through this explosion layer by layer and show how we created it. So the one thing I didn't really like about this explosion was the perspective of the building here, but we'll go ahead and just add it in just for the sake of this compositing tutorial. I feel like the building and the explosion, they weren't rendered at the right angles to composite together properly, but uh, now I'm seeing that it was just a little bit uncanny, but for the sake of this tutorial, we're going to roll with it. Uh, but anyway, the first layer, of course, was our building layer itself. We rendered a City Builder 3D asset right here in just a single frame of it. And then what we wanted to do is we wanted to add some damage to the window once the explosion happened so we uh, just added a little bit of damage and uh, cracks around the building here so we just kind of added that damage right when the explosion happens then we added an explosion shadow and that's just a little shadow that appears right when our explosion happens so that our uh, building has some you know environmental interaction on it and ideally it would probably be best for you to uh, render your explosion with your building here so that you have that environmental interaction between the building and the actual shadows that the explosion is projecting onto it but uh, again this is just what I did for this specific composite but just keep that in mind uh, then of course we added our explosion beauty pass here and uh, we duplicated it twice just to make it a little bit thicker uh, but that's the general idea here no glow or glare yet just kind of that basic explosion output from blender and uh, I cover how to export that explosion from blender in that tutorial that I mentioned earlier and uh, then we added a little bit of a uh, glow on the window and uh, I'll show you what we did here we actually added three different glows aside from the glow we're about to add on the explosion but if I just select these here as well We'll just select the glows by themselves along with the uh, background here. And uh, we just added a little bit of glow right on the window when the explosion happens. And as you can see, we keyframed it to go up right when that explosion occurs. So it just kind of creates some brightness and a little bit of environmental interaction as well. Uh, not too uh, complex. Obviously, it's pretty rudimentary. We just added some glow and uh, rolled with it there. So let's go ahead and keep moving on. And uh, the next thing that we added was the emission pass layer for our explosion. So we exported that pass from Blender as well. And uh, the emission pass is just the part of the explosion where the flames are. And then we've added a few effects to that emission pass as well. We've uh, remapped some of the colors to make it a little bit more red with the hue and saturation uh, effect here. And then we've added a bunch of glow to it as well as some more uh, hue and saturation and some blur to it as well. And if we take all these effects off, this is the emission pass by itself. And uh, as you can see, it's just kind of brightens up our flames a little bit. And if we turn it off, you can really see what it's doing. But then once we add all of these effects to it, it starts to add a little bit more realistic glow to the flames in our simulation. So that's what that layer is. And uh, then we started to add a bunch of our debris fields that we added in that tutorial as well. We have several different layers of both rebar and glass debris fields. I'll go ahead and select the rebar ones first. This is all the same debris field. We just duplicated it several times and put it in different areas to kind of blend the explosion together into the environment that we're in here. These rebar fields inside of the smoke and fire, I think, create a uh, really nice looking result as uh, you know you would expect some debris to be in a blast like this. Uh, so that was our next step. And uh, all we did other than overlay these onto our explosion was add a little bit of radial blur to kind of blend it in to the scene a little bit better since they're blasting out of the window here. And uh, we also added some glass particles as well. And again, we just duplicated the glass debris field so that we could use it multiple times and kind of put glass particles wherever we wanted it. But if we just go ahead and select the debris fields by themselves, we can actually play through just the debris. And we get something like that, which I think is uh, I think is one of the biggest aspects of selling your explosion is adding that debris to it. 
the next thing that we added to the explosion after the debris fields uh, was this uh, layer of sparks and uh, this was actually just a stock footage element that I had and I thought it might be cool to blend the explosion a little bit better so I just added that in if we go back a frame here we can actually see it's pretty subtle so I'll go ahead and zoom in a little bit here as you can see we have some sparks here that are just blasting out with the rest of the debris fields I thought that was just a nice little way to blend everything together and uh, we added two different spark fields at different times and uh, after adding those sparks we added a whole bunch of dust wave stock footage uh, and just kind of duplicated it around the origin of our explosion here to get that smaller scale dust and uh, just for fun I'm going to go ahead and show you guys the explosion with just the debris fields and the dust and then I'll show you the explosion with just the explosion simulation overlaid on top of the building just so you can get an idea on the different layers that went into bringing everything together so I'll go ahead and just uh, select everything except for the explosion itself and we'll just play through it here really quick And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and I'll show you without any of the debris or dust really quick. And we'll just play through it here. And uh, finally, the final result with both of those passes composited with each other looks like this. And uh, yeah, again, I think the biggest takeaway for me when creating this explosion that I'm going to do a little bit better next time is just trying to match the perspective of the building render itself so that it doesn't seem too uncanny. But I'm pretty happy with the way the uh, various debris fields uh, brought everything together regardless. And uh, yeah, this was our final result. Anyways, guys, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave any comments if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. And uh, let us know in the comment section below if you find these short compositing videos useful or if you'd like to see anything else. And I'll see you guys next time.